Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ramiro. I'm a member of Anticonquista. I live here in Los Angeles, California. And today we're kicking off our Decolonizing Media podcast. The Decolonizing Media podcast is an idea I had uh, with inspiration from a campaign by some indigenous comrades who started a decolonizing media account on social media uh, that basically breaks down stereotypes about indigenous people um, and the racist narratives that we've heard about um, indigenous people uh, throughout history. And so this series, this podcast series, Decolonizing Media for Anticonquista, is basically applying that to imperialism and capitalism uh, because of all of the uh, misinterpretations of reality by capitalists and imperialist media about uh, stuff going on in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, and also stuff going on with Latin American and Caribbean people living in the diaspora. And again, Anticonquista is the Communist Party of the Latin American and Caribbean diaspora. Before we delve into our first episode of uh, Decolonizing Media, I just wanted to give you some context as to, um, you know, why we're doing this, why is media so important for us to debunk and address as uh, communists and anti-imperialists. The main reason is because, you know, as Malcolm X said, um, the great revolutionary, he said that the mass media will make you think that your friends are your enemies and your enemies are your friends. And that's a quote that I live by, that I love. It's one of my favorite quotes. Um, and it just, it really is true because, you know, all of the media re representations that we have uh, about Venezuela, about Cuba, about Nicaragua, Bolivia, any country in Latin America and the Caribbean that stands up for itself and creates its own independent economy is demonized in mainstream media. And so this is kind of the purpose of that is to decolonize the narratives about movements and worker states in Latin America and the Caribbean that are constantly being attacked by the corporate media. And also uh, to talk a little bit about uh, what a new media looks like, a new revolutionary uh, socialist media. There's a great book uh, by the author Ben Bagdikian, The Media Monopoly, where he explains that six companies, Comcast, Disney, News Corp, Time Warner, CBS, and Viacom, own 90% of the U.S. media. Uh, take note that that book is a little bit old. I think it's maybe about a decade old now. So that number is probably down to five or four companies controlling over 90% of media in the U.S. So next time people tell you that there's no, uh, that there's freedom of expression and, and free media in the U.S., just keep them uh, keep in mind that it's a handful of multinational companies that that truly own uh, the media and dialogue in the United States and the first world in general. So today we're going to be talking about Venezuela. There's a video produced by uh, this woman named Joanna Hausman. She is a white Venezuelan woman. Um, she is a white settler with uh, obviously I'm guessing German or some sort of European roots. Um, who's basically spouting right-wing propaganda about what's going on in Venezuela. As you know, um, Venezuela is led by the United Socialist Party of Venezuela. It's a socialist anti-imperialist party since 1999. There's been the Bolivar Revolution that has uh, separated Venezuela from the Western capitalist system little by little. And Joanna Hausman, in typical right-wing fashion, uh, goes on to denigrate uh, President Maduro, Nicolas Maduro, democratically elected, she also, you know, talks badly about Hugo Chavez, who was there before him. And, you know, just basically repeats the same old mainstream media line that Venezuela is a dictatorship, that it's horrible, um, that the U.S. needs to go in and, and um, you know, get rid of these, these, uh, these leftists and these um, people of color who are running the country in, into the ground, uh, which is basically what she's saying um, in the video. And the video was published by Pero Like which is BuzzFe BuzzFeed's uh, new uh, Latino-specific page where they create content for, you know, popular culture stuff, hot Cheetos, uh, pupusas, and any anything else that's that can uh, approach and entertain people on a basic level uh, with occasionally with some imperialist propaganda mixed in there. So that was published by uh, Pero Like by BuzzFeed. And one last thing before to the video, we go to the video, 
uh, that's important to mention is that Joanna Hausman is the daughter of Ricardo Hausman, who is the former chief economist of the Inter-American Bank and the former minister of planning in Venezuela and the current director for the Center of International Development. And basically, Ricardo Hausman um, represents a specific class in Venezuela that is white, wealthy, uh, aligned with Western imperialism. You know, before uh, the Bolivarian Revolution of 1999, you know, he was the type of person who uh, supported the neoliberal austerity reforms that used money made from oil in Venezuela. Venezuela has the largest, the world's largest uh, oil reserves in the world. Um, and instead of using that money to help the poor and to help uh, feed the people in the country, um, obviously that money was used to multinational corporations, um, which I'm sure he probably pocketed some from as well. So without further ado, Let's jump right into this video, um, What's Happening in Venezuela by Joanna Hausman. Let's see what she has to say. I'm gonna preface this video with the fact that I'm gonna get pissed. <laughs> talking to Venezuelans about Venezuela is like talking to a vegan about being a vegan. They won't shut up about it and it's very depressing. Protests have been going on in the country for several months and those protests have been met with an iron fist from the government. I don't understand why this government, honestly, just doesn't give up. Clearly they're doing a terrible job. Hugo Chavez got into power in 1998 saying that he was going to end corruption and poverty. Well, what happened is the opposite. Poverty got worse and corruption got way worse too. There's been massive inflation in Venezuela that has then caused shortages to become a huge problem. So there's basically no food, there's no medicine, so people are legitimately dying for basically no reason. How? I, I honestly, it's insane because Venezuela was given just like everything possible for it to be an awesome country. But instead, it is basically a failed state. Venezuelans are sick. So what are they doing? They're going out to protest because what else is there to do? When they work, they don't make enough money to buy food. When they work, they don't make enough money to buy medicine because there is no medicine. The quality of life in Venezuela is abysmal. This is nothing less than a dictatorship and a totalitarian regime, period. And anyone else that says otherwise is just wrong. All of this is happening while the government seems to be ignoring the issues and blaming it on other people. Basically, they're being fucking assholes. Another symptom of this situation is that a lot of Venezuelans have had to leave Venezuela and a lot of Venezuelans feel like they can't do anything to help. Venezuelans that are outside of Venezuela, like me, have the responsibility to tell you what's going on because back home, people go to jail for expressing their opinion. Pana, nosotros somos los embajadores de nuestro país acá. Nosotros tenemos que darle información a la gente. Tenemos que salir a votar. Tenemos que seguir siendo voceros de la situación. I can't wait for the day I go back to a free Venezuela or I can go to Playa Parguito, tomarme una cocada y comerme una empanada de cazón, coño. Playa Parguito, it was lit. Yeah. I can't wait. Oh, that made me so nostalgic. I'm like... Aww. She says she can't wait to go back to a free Venezuela. Joanna Hausman, what freedom are you talking about? Are you talking about the Venezuela before 1999, where millions of people were hungry and starving under the capitalist economic system, where the country's resources were uh, not planned rationally? They were basically stolen and looted by foreign companies like Chevron, ExxonMobil. You know, are you talking about the free Venezuela? where leftists and um, trade organizers and human rights activists were killed by the right-wing neoliberal governments. And it's just, it's interesting because the way she talks about, you know, wanting her country back and reminds me a lot of kind of the right-wingers in the U.S. who are like, we want our country back. We want America to be great. And, you know, it just represents that same outdated conservative viewpoint of longing for a, a, a past um, this utopia that never really existed, or if anything, it just benefited uh, white wealthy settlers like herself and her family. So keep that in mind. Um, I think this video was fucking disgusting, honestly. Uh, just to give some some context, um, the protest that she was talking about, this video actually is from last year, 2017. Um, it is a little dated, but I think it's still relevant because this is literally the same content that's being rehashed on a daily, weekly basis about Venezuela. The protests she's talking about are the ones that took place in spring 2017. Uh, during these protests, at least 165 people died. Uh, the protests lasted from March 31st to August 12th. First of all, 
most of the people who were killed during these protests were Chavistas. I used to work for Telesor English uh, back in the day as an editor uh, while these protests were going on. And I f followed these protests pretty closely almost daily on a daily basis. And we were told to accurately cover it. We were told to, you know, mention that if someone was killed by a police officer, say that they were killed by a police officer. If someone was killed by an uh, opposition person, say that they were killed by an opposition person. We wanted our record to be as transparent as possible, and we did. And you can go on, on Telesur now and, and see those pieces um, where we kept the death toll on the protest. And by and large, the majority of the people who were killed were Chavistas. Take the case of Orlando Figueres. Uh, it also, his also, last name might also be Figue Figueroa. Um, I may, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly uh, his last name, but his first name is Orlando. He was a young black Chavista from Venezuela who was burned alive by some piece of shit white right wing protest from Venezuela, uh, burned alive simply for uh, being connected to the Chavista, the Bolivarian movement. A young black man was, was burned alive. But those are the kind of stories that you'll never see in uh, mainstream media about Venezuela because it doesn't fit into the narrative about the dictatorship. And they don't want you to know uh, the dark forces behind the opposition. Police did kill protesters. But honestly, I think that a revolutionary police under a revolutionary government has the right to defend itself against foreign-backed agitators paid by Washington, paid by the CIA, paid by the National Endowment for Democracy. They... The police there have the right to defend themselves against these agitators, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's not forget who these protesters are. Most of them are, you know, people who are getting money from these shadowy NGOs. Um, there's a great report by a journalist named Madeline Garcia. She did an investigative report from the trenches of the opposition where she interviewed um, some opposition protesters and, and found that they're being drugged up. They're getting paid. They're getting food. Um, they're getting backpacks full of these uh, weapons, makeshift weapons. And Madeline Garcia, she interviewed one protester who said that uh, opposition lawmaker named Miguel Pizarro in the National Assembly, uh, he would recruit young men and provide them with the supplies needed um, against the government. And so, you know, it just goes to show you how the right wing opposition takes uh, control, manipulates a very dire economic situation in Venezuela to use it for their political advantage and their aims and their goals, which resemble those of the United States. Yes, there are problems in Venezuela. There are some very serious economic problems in that South American country. However, we have to look at the root causes of those problems, inflation, um, food shortages, um, things like that. Those are the products of capitalist sabotage in the country. There are dozens of reports that show that the opposition has been intentionally hoarding food, hoarding flour, uh, money, uh, in order to create a state of chaos in the country, and so as to justify a foreign intervention. That's part of, you know, that's part of the new imperialist plot to take over the world, to take over countries like Venezuela, to create this um, revolutionary seeming opposition that's fighting for human rights and food and justice. Um, but in reality, they're creating the conditions for chaos so that they can bring in neoliberalism, capitalism, and all other forms of economic and political systems that benefit Washington. So I would definitely suggest checking out Madeline Garcia's work on that. It's really good. And, you know, even just the basic stuff she was mentioning in the video, she's talking about poverty, you know, and she just totally is, is wrong on that. Um, for example, from 1999 to 2009, which is um, the apex of Hugo Chavez's tenure in Venezuela, 60% um, of government revenue, mostly from oil, went to social programs. 60% is much higher than it was prior to Chavez coming into power when it was around 5 to 10% of money from PDVSA, which is the oil company, going towards social programs. So, you know, you can't tell me that they didn't invest in, in social programs and housing and education uh, when clearly six, over 60% of the revenue went to that. And that's according to the National Institute of Statistics. You know, also, it's important to keep in mind that the, you know, the average extreme poverty level in Latin America is 30.7%. When Chavez came into power, Venezuela's level of extreme poverty 
was 44%, just over 44%. And now that figure is less than 5% in Venezuela, extreme poverty. That's a big deal, honestly. I mean, tell me, point to me any other Latin American country that has accomplished that aside from Cuba or Bolivia. You know, you'll be hard pressed to find that. The number of underweight children at the end of the pre Chavez era was 5.3%, a figure that had, was cut in half by, by 2012. And today, 95.4% of Venezuelans eat three times per day. These stats clearly show that everything that Joanna Hausman was talking about is incorrect. She's decontextualizing a situation. Yeah, there are issues now. It's not perfect. We're not saying Venezuela is perfect. There's a lot of work to do. But what she's doing is she's addressing, she's placing the problems that exist in Venezuela on a government that has, throughout its whole tenure, focused on combating those problems. Those problems were created and were even worse before the Bolivarian Revolution. You know, poverty, hunger, malnutrition, the numbers are there. Look them up. They're right there for her to look at. Um, but this is another way in which media colonizes our people, makes us believe that Venezuela is our enemy, when in reality, Venezuela should serve as a model for the rest of Latin America and the Caribbean for how to develop an economy. And it's not like Maduro has just sat on his hands and not done anything to address the situation. You know, for example, in February 2018, uh, the government launched an oil-backed cryptocurrency called the Petro, uh, which is expected to move the country away from dependence on the U.S. petrodollar and to avoid the consequences of cash hoarding, which I think is a great idea. Uh, and as well, the Venezuelan government has also created a program called CLAP, Local Committees for Supply and Production, which provides free and low-cost food items to all Venezuelans. And that includes vegetables, fruits, grains, and other essential nutrients. And by the way, those are GMO-free foods, so they're not poisoning the people as they are in the United States. Um, and lastly, you know, there's Joanna talks about corruption um, in Venezuela. She's saying that they're corrupt, 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 which is complete bullshit. I mean, under the government now, it's extremely democratic. If anything, I would argue, um, as a communist myself, that the ruling party is too easy on the opposition. In my opinion, I think the opposition parties should, should have been banned a long time ago and kicked out of the country for sabotaging it. Um, but that's, again, my opinion. But I support the course that the Venezuelan op uh, government is taking now. Um, you know, with trying to create peace in the country. And so, you know, all these concepts of corruption and it's complete bullshit. If you look at Maduro's government, they've been some of the hardest on corruption. All these oil officials who were paid off by the right wing, um, you know, they've been fired, they've been prosecuted. And again, you should look that up as well, because that's very important to know next time people say that Venezuela is corrupt. <laughs> Um, and lastly, you know, I just wanted to to mention that this video by Joanna Hausman is just a classic example of the kind of bullshit that we're fed every day about Venezuela, about Latin America, the Caribbean, any any region or country that stands up for itself, that is decolonizing itself, gets this kind of treatment by the mainstream media and by these entitled white settlers who want to bring back a country that was horrible for black, indigenous, and working class people. We shouldn't listen to the garbage that Joanna Hausman is putting out there. We should follow stuff like Telesur, uh, Venezuela Analysis, Anticonquista, new decolonized media. And that's the purpose of this podcast, Decolonizing Media and Anticonquista, is to bring you that point of view that you're not going to hear from anyone else. So uh, thank you all for watching uh, and listening to this podcast today. This is, again, Decolonizing Media on Anticonquista. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and IG at Anticonquista. And you can also go to Anticonquista.com, uh, check out our articles. We actually have a great article written by Comrade Tania Apasa about this very video. So I suggest you all check that out. And uh, thank you all for tuning in and hope to talk to you soon.